Hi there, I am Mary Poplin with Boris Effects, and today we're going to talk a little bit about when to use a remove, when to use an insert, when to use tracking data. So I was calling this when to patch, when to paint, and when to use a remove. So a lot of times folks will think that the remove module is magic or does something you know, um, really intuitive with the pixels and creates things from scratch. And it doesn't. All the remove tool does is tracks an object, tracks the background that moves behind it, and then uses those background pixels to replace the foreground pixels. It can also sometimes match lighting. But the success of that is going to depend on many factors. And one of the factors is whether or not there's lens warp that you've accounted for in the scene, um, how much parallax is in the background, whether or not the data that moves behind the object is planar, whether or not you have people or occlusions um, moving in front or behind the object. So a lot of times what will seem like a remove can really be a patch or paint job. And I want to kind of show you what I mean by that. So a patch is going to be a bit of pixels that you put behind an object um, as a solid patch that you track into the background. It doesn't account for lighting changes, but it can account for things like motion blur, which is handy because the remove tool doesn't do that. Um, and then you can use that patch and roto foreground objects back over the top. And as long as you roto really well, it will look nice. Um, same thing for paint. Paint is essentially a patch made up of a bunch of different little paint strokes and then tracked in. Or you can stabilize an object using planar data, and then you can paint on top of that. So there's many different ways to do this sort of work. And I want to talk about when you want to use a remove and when you want to use tracking data or an insert. So let's get started on that. All right, so if you look at this shot, also I want to, uh, I want you to keep in mind that you can answer, I'm sorry, you can ask your questions in the chat and I will answer them. So as long as we're engaged and answering questions, I should be able to help you with any questions that you have. So I'm going to look over here to the left from time to time, and that's where my stream chat is. And I'll be able to see if you ask me a question in real time, and I'll be able to answer it. So for something like this shot, you know, I would not want to do any sort of paintwork on this person without using a lot of blending modes. Or alternatively, I'd want to make sure that I wasn't doing things like trying to paint around uh, any of those lighting occlusions. These, this is an occlusion as far as Mocha is concerned, even though it's a lighting projection, okay? So if you want to paint a shot like this, you are going to end up in a world of hurt, okay? So what you'd really have to do to redo a shot like this is rebuild it in pieces. So this is not a good candidate for remove. This is not even really a great candidate for things like an insert. This is a straight paint project um, and rebuilding in layers. And that's not always a lot of fun. So I wanna talk about a couple more shots. Um, something like this. This is a good candidate for a remove. If you wanted to remove this girl from the scene, you really pretty much could because you can track the background and the background is far enough away that it acts as a plane. You're still going to end up with a little bit of artifacting here at the bottom um, because you don't have enough information to completely replace her, but you could build a clean plate to get around that. And I can show you what I mean by that. So if you wanted to do a remove on this shot, you could build a remove out like we normally build removes. So if we let's do this here, so if we wanted to remove her, let's to the selected layer here. What we could do is we could track her, and I'm just gonna show you what we've done here. We could track her and make sure that we always keep her inside of our roto shape. And you can also track the background. And you see that if we track the background behind her, we always have a roto shape out that's a garbage mat to make sure that she doesn't contaminate that background information. Now, if we were going to do a remove on the shot, what we'd want to do is we'd want to see what Mocha could, re could remove. So let's go ahead and turn our overlays off and I'm going to click on my remove module and I'm going to hit render and see Mocha will do a pretty good job of taking her out of the scene. Now there's a little bit left behind and that's because I don't have enough pixels moving behind her to replace them. But this is where the remove is handy. Okay. A shot like this, the remove can do. Um, but another shot like, let's see, what can I find here? I've got some up here with some, right. 
Okay, so if I wanted to remove somebody out of this scene, like let's say I wanted to remove this ice skater out of this scene, the remove module would not be how I would do this, okay? What you would have to do is, honestly, you'd be kind of out of luck because so many objects move in front and behind of this guy that you're not really gonna get a good removal process here. You're better off just kind of removing as many people as you can by creating one big clean plate and placing that in and then rotoing the people back into the scene that don't have anyone moving before or behind them to get people back in. But you're gonna have problems trying to repaint people frame by frame. If you really have to repaint somebody frame by frame, you can use clone, um, the clone tool and repaint them frame by frame but your results will be extremely limited. You might even have to just freeze people in place for a minute to get around that. So I just wanna talk about what's doable and what's not doable. This is not great for remove. This is not really great for paint. And it's not really great for things like the insert module. And it's really important to know when those shots are problem shots. Cause a lot of times people will see somebody removed from a scene and they'll think it's really easy. Now, I see a question in the chat, which is, I'm not that good at masking. How can I sh um, shorten the progress with Mocha? Um, I imagine that means how can you speed up the roto process in Mocha? Um, we actually did two other uh, live, um, I'm sorry, office hours on rotoscoping, um, and they're in some of the beginning parts of the office hour series. You can go look those up, or you can look up on um, BorisFX.com. We have a whole series on rotoscoping. The way that you basically do rotoscoping faster in Mocha is you use Mocha in order to um, track an object first, and then you can attach roto shapes to that for to get quicker results. So I'll show you really quickly um, in this example. This is meant to be a remove as well. I'm just going to spoiler alert. It kind of works. Um, what you want to do is you want to launch Mocha. I was doing a compare and contrast to the um, auto fill in After Effects. Um, and Mocha for this as well. I was just experimenting with it, but let's talk a little bit about how this works. Um, if I want to track this person and I want to do a garbage mat, if I try to track a big shape like this around them, I'm going to get very poor results. I'll show you what that looks like. If I hit track forwards, you will see that that is not a very successful mat, okay? And that's because I'm tracking too many multi-planar objects at once. If I take my Mocha Pro shape and I move this over to this guy's head only, for example, and I switch to translation only, and I've narrowed my search area quite a bit, when I hit track forwards, I will get a much better shape to track this guy with, okay? Once that track is complete, I can change the shape, and this is how we speed up our process. When we, The way we speed up our process in Mocha for rotoscoping is we create tracking data, and then we link roto shapes to that. In this case, what I want you to understand is where the shape is, is where Mocha is looking, okay? And this surface tool is what the track is doing, and that'll show you how the track is moving. In this case, we want to make this a much bigger shape around our fellow here. And let's just go ahead and shrink this a little bit around him, just like this. So now we've altered our shape, and it moves along with our guy through the scene. We can use this to remove him. So in this case, if I hit delete here, we'll call this person remove, and we'll make sure that we track our background. What I've done with the background here is I have created one big shape. Um, I'll show you how that works. And I've said link to track, none. Okay, and then as we track forward in this scene, what you'll see is when we have linked our track to none, what will happen is our track, this corner pin, will move off screen, but our shape stays in one place. Now, in this case, what we want to do is we want to retract this. I want to do translation scale and rotation only. Let's hit track forwards. Excuse me. Let's hit track forwards, just like this. We're going to retract this. We're going to take a look at this background and make sure that it's moving properly. All right. And this is another, this is another, um, instance where getting a good track will make a good remove. So let's go ahead and hit continue to track forwards just like this. There we are. And depending on the accuracy of our data, we can remove this guy. Now this remove actually does not give me beautiful results. And one of the reasons it doesn't is because we have a lot of parallax happening in this shot. 
Um, if you look, you can see that there's quite a bit of parallax happening on this door edge. It's not moving in a 100% planar way. But let's just render this really quick. Click on our person remove, click on our remove, turn our mats off and hit render. And yeah, you can see we really don't get good results here. And that's also probably because I've solved for a lens here that's incorrect. But I want to show you that just because something looks like a good remove um, candidate does not always mean it is a good remove candidate. So if you look at this scene, you can see there's a lot of lens curve happening here. And you can see that we were having a really hard time getting a good track. Anytime you've got a situation like that, even though this looks like it would be a good remove, it's not. And I've tried it 10 different ways, actually, and it's still not a good remove. We get a lot of artifacts with it. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have a lot of parallax um, happening between, like, for instance, the edges of your doors, um, where it's so set in Z space that you get a warp, um, and you have a lot of camera lens warping, um, you're not going to get a rock solid remove. And this kind of thing would be better done with large patches over the doors and over the walls in pieces to try to get a better remove here. Now, I see another question here, which is, I mean, I want to create a text behind an object or a person. Um, yes. So if you want to rotoscope a person, um, once again, this is not going to be a roto demo. Um, this is going to be a demo about when you can use removes and when you can use um, inserts and when you can use paintwork uh, to on, on various shots and talking about the breakdown of why that works and why it doesn't. Um, if you want to see a specific roto tutorial, once again, we do have earlier tutorials um, of the office hours that are strictly for rotoscoping. And we also have a breakdown on our website for um, the How to Learn Mocha series, and it is also really helpful for that kind of thing. So in the future, um, you should check those out and go through them, and I think you'll find good results there. All right, so another thing that I want to talk about that could work as a patch or as a remove, and this is going to be like there's more than one way to skin a cat here. Okay, with this shot, what we've got here is we've got this fellow who's got a... Um, Let's just let this play through and cash. He's got a fake mustache on. Okay. And if we want to remove this, we're going to have to do this in one of two ways. We can actually, we, all three methods um, that I mentioned earlier could work on this shot. We could stabilize the side of his face and paint it. We could use a patch to fix it, or we could use a remove. Um, and in this case, I will show you how we could do either one of those three methods. Okay. So with this shot, let's go ahead and let's take our original footage here. And here we are. Let's duplicate this. All right. And let's call this stabilization or actually let's call it remove. So if we wanted to remove this strap on the side of his face here. What we would do is we would apply Mocha Pro just like this. Let's launch Mocha and let's get started. I need to download the update, but I haven't done that yet. All right, so first things first, I'm going to take a X spline and I'm going to put it around the area that I want to remove, which is this little bit here. And also where it's rubbed against his cheek, you can see that I want to remove that area as well. So that's kind of a large area. No problem. We're going to call this cheek remove. Okay. Uh, now we're going to make another shape, a larger one, around the side of his ears and the side of his mouth here. Okay. And notice that I'm avoiding his mustache. Okay. And I'm doing that for a reason. That's because this will move differently. We're going to call this BG. Okay. I'm going to take cheek remove and I'm going to link it to the background track. All right. And so what that will do is that will mean that it doesn't matter how this is tracked. What I'm caring about is this track back here. Okay. And once again, we're also going to track this without tracking this little wire here. The reason I don't want to track the wire is because I want to get the motion of the cheek. I don't want to get the motion of the wire. And as he moves his mouth, this wire moves separately. So let's go ahead and hit track forwards using translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. And let's turn our surface tool on so we can see whether or not that looks good. I feel like we're losing it a little bit. 
So let's see what we're losing it on. We're losing it on his collar there and we're losing it on his hat. Okay, so let's hit track forwards. There we go. Still feel like I'm not getting a great track here. So let's actually do this. Let's, inc let's get rid of our perspective. Let's make sure that we're tracking with as much tracking as possible. And let's hit track forwards. And I think what I may be running into is a bug and that's okay. We're going to fix it. Let's save and close. And I want to show you something that we can do to fix this. Um, I'm going to go to, sorry, I'm going to go to Mocha really quick. And if you're ever having a problem where you should be able to track something that you know you should be able to track, but for some reason your GPU isn't processing correctly, you can go to your preferences. You can go to GPU and you can say, hey, um, either specify the processor or turn GPU processing off. Hit OK, save, close. And what you can do is you can save your project and close it. And then over here inside of After Effects, you can restart After Effects. And what that will do is that will allow you to reset the GPU processing inside of After Effects. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's go over to our remove. Let's launch Mocha again. And we should retract this with something slightly better. So let's go ahead and select our BG track here. Let's zoom in and let's go ahead and hit track forwards. And I should get a better track. And I do. Okay. So clearly I was having some sort of GPU error there. If you ever see your track bouncing like that, um, a lot of times what the problem is, is it is a GPU error. Um, it's something that's happening inside of your image processing that's making it to where it's not reading correctly. And I'll troubleshoot that later. I don't want to troubleshoot that in the middle of a demo, but it is a good way to sort of show you how to overcome obstacles when you run into them on the fly. Okay, so now if I want to patch this, I can do this in a couple of ways. I Or I can do a remove. I'll show you the remove first. So for the remove, we're going to fix, um, we're going to pick a nice frame where the object is most parallel to the camera, largest in frame, least blurry. That's going to be right here at the end of the shot. I'm going to hit create clean plate, and then I'm going to save a clean plate. We're going to call this mustache. Okay, and we're going to save this. All right, so now I'm going to jump over to Photoshop for a second, and I'm going to open up this mustache here. So let's go to our insert or remove and clean plates, and let's grab our mustache shot. So I don't have enough pixels moving behind this object inside of the remove module to replace this whole section. That's a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, uh, let's create some of these pixels from scratch, so to speak. We're going to just cheat a little bit and have, um, have the algorithm fill this in for us just like this. All right, and let's go to edit and let's go to fill and let's do content aware fill. And that fills that in pretty decently. I need to use my healing tool and I need to do a little bit of healing here to get some texture back so that this looks correct, just like this. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. So now I have this lovely new set of pixels I can put in to um, sort of fix this, uh, this fellow's makeup. So let's go ahead and save that and let's go back over to After Effects. So over in After Effects and Mocha, I've still got my clean plate. I'm going to click use, use clean plates exclusively and I'm going to check and make sure that my clean plate that I took from frame 198 is being read at frame 198. And that's because you never want this to say all and you never want this number to not match this number because it'll be offset by however many frames, you have an offset between this, these two numbers. Okay. So we're going to hit okay. And so now what I can do is I could use something like linear illumination modeling and I could turn my overlays off so you can see what we're doing and I could render backwards. And what we'll get is we'll get a nice little remove here and we could even blend it back in using edge feathering, but the remove tool itself does not respect edge feathering. You have to do a render first and then you can render that back into your scene with feathering. So once I can just save this and close it and I could say, hey, let's duplicate this real quick um, and let's render this back to the timeline. Let's go to module renders, render, 
remove. And let's say I want to apply my mat. I'll select my visible layers, which is going to be my cheek remove and hit OK. And then I can actually feather this back in like with a 15 pixel feather. And you can see that does a lot. Let's actually take it down to seven. So that does a lot to put that back in with a soft edge. So that's one way that I could do this. The other way that I could do this is I could take this same exact, the same exact file and let's go to our insert module, okay? And so I could take my cheek remove here. Let's go ahead and use our selected layer. And I could say, hey, I want to take this clean plate, but I want to bring the clean plate back into my scene. Ah, what do I need to do for that? Let's call this insert, okay? Let's go to our project. And in our project, let's import our clean plate that we made in our insert. So let's take this mustache import. Okay, so this is our, our little mustache. It's on the last frame, okay? What I can do is I can select my insert because now we're doing this in a different way. I take my insert, I can go into my module renders and I could say, hey, I want you to render an insert composite. And what I'd really like for you to do is I'd like you to take the insert layer and make it the mustache layer. So now when we open Mocha, what we can do is we can take our cheek remove. Let's go to here. Let's go to the end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cheek remove or we'll call this cheek insert now. Okay. And I'll take my cheek insert and I'm going to align my surface, expand the planar surface of the selected layers to fill the entire frame. This is the align surface tool. If I hit this, and then I go to insert clip and select my insert layer. You can see that now I have my little insert put right in over my scene. And you can see that it warps based on my tracking data. Okay, but that doesn't look correct. Why? I don't want to do it that way. So what I'll do is I'll go to my cheek insert and I'll say, hey, um, use the mask for the cheek insert. Okay. And so now it will use the mask for the cheek insert and it'll patch it back over the top. But notice it does not match any lighting changes, okay? I would have to adjust those lighting changes myself in order to get that, whereas the remove matched those lighting changes. Now, there's one more way that I could solve this shot, and that is I could stabilize this. So if I take this, and let's just go ahead and um, let's go to our... shot and let's go to our tracking data and what i want to show you is over here with my overlays and my surface tool you can see that this would be my reference frame here at the end if i exported this as a corner pin okay so what i can do is i can do one of two things i can either come over here to stabilize and i can say hey um, i need you to stabilize all motion with maximum smoothing and I need you to make the frame at the end full frame, just like this. And this would stabilize my shot that I could then paint on and I could destabilize it. So let's just go ahead and save this and close it. And let's duplicate this and call it stabilize. Okay, so we have our stabilize. And what we can do with our stabilize is if I come in here to module renders and we go to render stabilize. All right, what we're gonna end up with is our shot but stable, so I could paint on this. Um, what this does is this means I could go to like layer pre-compose and I could paint on it. I could also take our tracking data. We could create our tracking data from our cheek insert. And we could do a CC power pin to do the same thing. Okay, so there are tons of different ways to use this data and it's all gonna depend on what you need to do. Okay, and that's really important. So I'm gonna cut back one second to me. So I'm showing you these many different methods for the same shot because I wanna show you where they fail and where they are successful, okay? This is important knowledge to figure out how to troubleshoot a shot and what methods are going to work best. Because there are so many different ways to do things, you might find some things are easier than others. For this shot, the remove tool is honestly the easiest solution because you can just use a clean plate. It'll match the lighting. You can blend it back in and you're done. 
Okay, you can always degrain and regrain the whole shot and you're finished. Um, the second easiest method is gonna be your stabilize and your um, paint on top of that. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a second. The third option, it's kind of a little bit more difficult, is taking a patch and then you can render the patch with motion blur and you can hand correct the lighting and blend it back into the scene. That starts to get a little tedious, but it's also another method that you could do or you could also patch it in with a corner pen um, using the same sort of patch. So in this case, I'm gonna show you a stabilized paint and you can do this either with an AECC power pen or if you're in Nuke or Fusion, just a straight up uh, corner pen node, anything like that, okay? And you stabilize the area that you wanna paint and then you paint it. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so if I want to stabilize this, I've already stabilized it. Here's my stabilized shot. Looks really good. Very nice. Um, so what we'll do is we will uh, copy this or actually I'm going to show you, I think I'm going to show you the corner pin workflow. Yeah, I'll show you the corner pin workflow. Let's duplicate this and call this corner pin. Okay, so let's take our renders and turn those off. Okay, and let's create our tracking data. So we've got our tracking data. Let's go to tracking data, create tracking data from the cheek insert, just like this. I'm gonna say, I want you to do a CC power pin, please. So we're gonna say apply export to our corner pin layer. Um, let's see, excuse me, apply export to corner pin. There we are. Okay, so now we have our, our pinned shot and we want to um, unstretch. There we go. All right, so. Here's our CC power pin. All right, so we've unstretched and we have pinned our shot that we wanna paint, okay? So now what we can do is we can go to layer. I'm gonna copy this first. Let's copy this. I'm gonna layer and I can go to pre-compose. All right, and in pre-compose, I can move all attributes from the new composition and I can call this paint on, okay? And so now what we have is we have something that we can use a paint tool on inside of After Effects. So let's just go ahead and take our paint and let's double click. And what we can do is I can take a reference area and I can start painting over the top, just like this. Same thing, paint right over the top, just like this. And this is just the same exact workflow you'd use for any sort of any sort of roto paint, just like this. Now I'm not going to spend too long on painting this, but I just kind of want to show you what I'm talking about. So uh, let's come in here and just do a little bit of that. This is a very quick and dirty paint. Okay, but we've got our paint. And you can see that it's moving across the whole timeline based on our stabilization. So that is our very quick clone paint to paint this out, all right? So what I can do now is I can take this, I can say, hey, let's go to layer, let's go to pre-compose. And once again, we're gonna move all attributes into the new composition. We're gonna call this paint destable. And we're gonna say, okay, and Let's go back to our project here. Thank you. There we are. And let's just hit paste to get this back over the top. So we have our corner pin, unstretch. And so now there's our paint back in the shot. And what we can do is we can mask this out to make it fit back over everything. So many, many ways to skin a cat many, many ways to put this data back in. So if I wanted to take my stabilize here, let's go to our, let's go to our mocha. Let's duplicate this, move this up here. Let's go to our mats. Let's do our visible layers. Let's do a cheek remove and let's go ahead and apply mat. Perfect. Let's do an alpha mat over the top. And what we should have we just go ahead and duplicate this underneath. We should be able to see our paint destabilize right here. Yep. 
So that's going to mask our paint right back in over the top. So you can see that we're using the mask that we used for all three different techniques um, for this area. You can see that we did a paint that we used a CC power pen on, but we could have also used a stabilize on. Um, and we also um, used the background layer to put the information back under the bottom. So um, I see in here uh, that we have some folks asking for flame and nuke workflows. Yeah, there is a market for that as well. You're correct. Um, right now I do a lot of After Effects stuff because we have a lot of After Effects users. Um, we do have Nuke users as well, uh, but I kind of figure that if you are a Nuke artist, you can interpolate these to the Nuke nodes pretty easily um, because the workflows are all the same. But yeah, I can work on doing some more Nuke tutorials for you if you want. Um, but considering that it's really not a lot different to take a corner pin um, in After Effects as it is to take a corner pin in Nuke, except for just how you're pathing the nodes. You know, I, I, I do think that these are universal workflows that talk a little bit about what will work and what will not work as far as how we're thinking about the shot. So, but yeah, you're right. And Flame would also benefit from having more tutorials in this way. All right, so that is a general breakdown of three different techniques you can use. And then let's talk a little bit more about some of the shots that you really want to be a little bit more thoughtful about. So for stuff like this, this is the kind of shot that in general is not going to be a good candidate for paint, remove, or anything. Um, you're going to have to rebuild a shot like this or reshoot it. Um, shots like this, uh, this is actually something that, and it's funny you mentioned Nuke, um, I included this shot because I don't know if you guys have seen the video uh, that Pink did uh, where she's dancing with shadows. Uh, that was a ton of paint work and the remove module did get used on it, but so did a lot of patches. So did a lot of 3D projections. So did an absolute ton of rotoscoping and an absolute ton of roto paint. Um, so if you wanted to take this person out of this shot and just have the shadow on the wall, um, you're looking at a whole lot of paint. You also kind of want to think about shooting this where the light depth from her to the wall is a little bit deeper so that you have less work to do because some of that work is just simply going to have to be reinvented. Um, that being said, you can really get away with it um, as far as tracking this kind of, this kind of scenario, okay? Um, a lot of, a lot of times we get used on beauty work. And one of the things that I want to talk about with beauty work is if you have a shot like this, where you have a lot of shadows moving over an object, um, this is going to be one of those times where you want to do a stabilized paint and then you want to just stabilize her face and you want to paint on that over time. You can use Mocha to stabilize that data. Um, you can also use Silhouette, which is a tool that Boris Fix also makes. Um, where you can use Silhouette to do a raster-based paint based on a lockdown image of this. And that would be a good solution here because you're dealing with some things like um, levels of detail that you need to separate out. Um, in Nuke, you would consider using a frequency separator for this to kind of get that different data and paint on those different layers. Uh, you'd also still want to stabilize the shot. In Silhouette, that's built in. There's a stabilize. I'm sorry, there's a stabilization from the track, but there's also a built-in frequency separator where you can pick between um, whether or not something is detail and whether or not something's color. And that can help a lot for this type of shot as well. But what you're looking at here is a, a ton of hand paint. If you have anything you want to paint on her, on her face, like let's say you want to make her skin completely flawless, which I think is boring, but you know, a lot of times talent will ask for that. Like they'll say, you know, what is this on her forehead? Let's get rid of, let's, let's start managing pixels. You know, I don't think that's very interesting. I think you could probably just put a beauty effect on this and call it a day, but you know, some people are really picky. Um, this kind of thing, not really good for, uh, a remove. So something that I get asked about a lot is like, how do I remove these logos in the background or how do I remove, um, you know, something that didn't pass compliance in the background. And the shot will be something like this where you have, two foreground people with a lot of soft edges moving over something that's like illuminated in the background or just has 
foreground occlusions like crazy or lighting changes like crazy, this is not going to be something that you're going to want to do with a remove. This is something that you're going to want to try to do with painting. Okay, so just realistic expectations here. Something like this. Uh, you can actually remove use the remove for this, but you're going to have to use it in pieces. And the kind of thing that I would use the remove for is removing these people on the hillside. For example, if we're trying to do like um, a shot and not have something be so anachronistic, we can remove these people on the hillside based on the planar data, and we can remove these people down here in the cars and tents. Um, but when you start talking about the town over here, this is going to be a matte painting, and that's going to be something that you actually need to patch in by hand. Same thing for back here. Um, what you'd really want to do is you'd want to roto out this entire hillside if you needed to make this feel like it was back in, I don't know, um, the days of Normandy. Uh, then you would want to do a whole lot of rotoscoping and then put matte paintings in to fix the shot. So there's a lot of different cleanup passes that you have to do um, to to take the footage that you've shot and make it into something that is usable later. And usually there's not a one-click solution. So you could probably get a one-click solution on most of the people, okay? But you will not get a one-click solution on this background. This is going to be a set rebuild that you're going to have to use on top of any other removes that you're doing. Um, so I just, I downloaded a bunch of stuff to try to talk about it. Um, some of the other things that you can use uh, that are not really a good candidate for removes, this is not, if you had, if you didn't have rights to this painting and you needed to replace this painting or this was a TV or whatever, um, this would not be a good candidate for remove. This is where you would use a corner pin or a patch or an insert or anything like that uh, to do some deep compositing and then roto over the top. Um, something like this. This is deceptive and this is why I actually included this in here. Um, you would think that you would want to do a patch or an insert for this. But this is actually a really good candidate for a remove because the remove does a really good job at lighting matching, okay? And this is one of those shots that you really want to match lighting for and not have to do it by hand because clearly he's walking into a siren light. Now that is going to be a real problem to try to match by hand. You're going to end up just hand animating everything and that's no fun at all. Okay, so instead, I would use the remove for this, even though it looks like something that would be straightforward as a corner pen. So it's a matter of knowing what each tool is good for and how to work from there. Okay, so um, I see a question, which is how would you set this up for the shadow on the face? Honestly, um, I'd open up Silhouette and work there. And we can talk about that um, in another office hours where I can set up a Silhouette shot for you with um, with shadows in the face, but I would stabilize the shot and I would hand paint it like from scratch. And it would take probably the entire office hours to go over it. So, but uh, the basic workflow would be stabilize it, use frequency separation to separate out the detail for the face that we were just talking about. Let's go back to it. Where was it? Here, this face. I would track probably her eyebrows and use those as my stabilization point. Okay. Because I can't really track her forehead because of all the shadows. Um, I track her eyebrows and probably her hairline to get the general trajectory of where this dot on her forehead is. I'd stabilize it probably on, probably on this frame here. Okay. And then what I would do is I would use frequency separation to try to paint out the color there. And, um, also the, um, there's a blemish brush that I would use um, in silhouette specifically to try to get this shot done because this is a lot of paint and it's a little bit more tricky than just doing roto paint. Um, although I do have a nuke tutorial actually for this type of shot. It's called um, UFO No. Um, and I can see if I can find that link for you, but it's a UFO No. And I used um, a stabilization workflow. Uh, to paint a shadowed shot like this inside of Nuke. And um, if you look that up on YouTube, UFO No um, and Mary Poplin and Paint, uh, you should find that tutorial. And that gives a really detailed breakdown of how I do the shot. So thank you for asking that question. Um, and also that gives you the Nuke stuff that you're looking for. So hopefully that will help as well. Um, Shots like this, this is not a good candidate for the remove model, module, not only just because of the flare, but also because of how large she is in frame, how much parallax is in the shot, 
how much the planar data is just not very planar behind her. It seems like it would be, but actually these recesses are quite 3D and um, we're, you know, we're dealing with 2D pixels here. So you've also got people moving behind her and a lot of occlusions. So that's something to think about. Um, workflows. This is actually something that I did a remove on just as a, as a test and I'll show you. Um, we have here this castle and what I was trying to do here was I was trying to work on um, getting rid of anachronistic objects in the scene. So in this case, we've got these people sitting out here in normal clothes. All right. And we've got this turning through the scene. And what I did is I made a, a clean plate and used our tracking data. So if we go here into a clean plate, you can see I made two clean plates, um, one at the beginning and one at the end. And we tried to render this out. Let's go ahead and hit render forwards. And you can see that we tried to remove these people from the scene. And what I would then do is I would remove these solar panels and I would remove this wire here. And you just have to do this in various passes to get rid of any sort of anachronistic stuff in your shots. And this is really common um, when you're shooting old places with modern technology. You know, a lot of times these places are tourist places. And in order to accommodate tourists, they have modern amenities. But modern amenities are not good when you are trying to blend stuff into a scene. So you a lot of times have to paint out these what I what I tend to call anachronistic objects. And this is one of those times, especially since a lot of times these places can't be closed. So sometimes you will have people like wandering into your shot in a really inopportune way. So. But I just kind of want to show you where this works and where it doesn't, right? So for something like that, obviously the remove works really well. Um, but for something like this, seems like it would, but there's a lot of motion here and not, not a lot of 2D space behind somebody. This would work well as a remove. It would also work well as a patch. It would also work well as paint. Um, you could do any one of those methods for this. Um, with the boat on the water, though, if you wanted to remove the boat, uh, here's something that I, I run into all the time, and I just want to talk about this for one second. Um, a lot of times, the simplest solution for a shot like this, it seems like it should be complex, but it's not. Um, the simplest solution for something like this is to go over to Effects and Presets. Let's take in, type in Mocha, Apply Mocha. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to launch Mocha. And I'm just really quickly, very quickly, going to track this little boat here right there. Let's uh, track it this way. All right, and let's track this with translation only, track it right through the scene. And it'll follow that boat pretty well. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this shape as like a holdout. And we're going to subtract this object from the scene. And we're going to move um, a plate underneath until we get the information that we need. So a lot of times people think that everything has to be like a paint solution, and it doesn't. So sometimes the solution is just move an object over. So let's let this finish tracking, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. This also is useful for things like replacing um, well, not replacing, but filling out a beard. A lot of times fake beards and fake um, fake hair will have edges that you need to paint back over. And this is a pretty good workflow for that as well. Um, you just sort of patch and move over. So let's save this and let's close it. Okay, back inside of Mocha, what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, we're going to go into our mats and we're going to say, hey, create AE masks. OK, and I'm going to go into my AE mask and I'm going to subtract. All right. So now I've got a big hole in my mat. Now, you could try using content aware fill, I guess, but that would take a long time to render when the real solution is actually just come in here. Let's delete this mask um, and let's take our transform data and let's just uh, move this over. All right. And so now my boat is gone. OK, my water is still moving correctly. I have a moving patch that matches my camera motion. OK, and I just I have no problems. It's just gone. All right. Now, that is the kind of thing that I'm talking about that really is just it's a simple solution. And you really just don't need to um, you don't need to worry about, you know, uh, 
about doing something really complicated for that. Now, what I'd probably do for this is if you zoom in, you can see that because it's moving over a mountain, you know, we would probably need to replace that little mountain there just really quickly and probably soften the shape a little bit, like maybe do a mask feather of like two pixels. Yeah, two pixels hides any edge. So we would still need to mask in a little bit of mountain here on the horizon and track it in, but that is a very easy fix for something that would normally be kind of a pain to paint out. So keep that in mind when you're doing these sorts of removes. Sometimes the solution isn't removed. Sometimes the solution is, you know, cut a hole in the, in the uh, plate and then move the plate underneath it until you get something that moves correctly. And this only works if it's moving on the same plane of data as usual for all of this stuff. So we're covering a lot of different ty types of shots here, but let's talk about occlusions. Sometimes people will say, I want to remove something from a scene like this, and you've got all these foreground occlusion objects. That's not gonna work. No amount of paint is gonna fix this shot. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put a patch in and then you're going to have to roto out some of these foreground tendrils and then put them in another patch over the top of everything to get it to look right. Um, I've done this with some success with like license plates and stuff like that, but you really have to pull a key and do some roto and, and sort of hide all of your edges uh, with other occlusions. Okay. Um, shots like this, or if you need to replace anything behind her, you're going to have to start pulling some really serious keys for those um, hairs. And you're going to have to want to do a patch once again. This kind of th stuff is a serious occlusion. Um, same thing for this lady's hair. Anytime you've got objects like this moving over a background object, you're going to have to do a whole lot of roto and a whole lot of rebuild over the top of something to get this to look right. Um, let me see if I have a reflection in here anywhere. Let's see. I don't, but the same thing applies for reflections. You really have to build stuff back on top for reflections. Here's another good example of like when you'd have to rebuild. Um, if I wanted to paint, for instance, this, this little boy has a cut on the side of his face that he probably got from just, you know, being a little boy. But sometimes if you're doing a commercial or something like that, you need to remove an object like that. Um, if you do, you're going to have to make sure that you carefully rebuild everything over the top of that section again. And here's where it starts to get really hairy. This is a lot like reflections. Okay, when you're dealing with shots like this, you have to do, you have to really account for how transparent these sections are. So if you look here, you can see that you can still see the red through the defocus <clears throat> of that um, foreground object. So in some cases, what you're going to end up needing to do is not just removing that blemish, but removing this whole section from about here to here where you've got anchor points that you can hide your seams in and then rebuilding this entire section back over the top. Same thing for reflections. You have to rebuild the reflection from scratch as well. So it's not just about patching the object. It's about patching the object um, and then patching whatever goes over the top to it. So. When you're thinking about paintwork, I just want you to think about all these different kinds of paintwork that you're going to run into and that most of the time there is no magic solution. So I don't want to um, take up too much more of your time. We're running out of time, but I do want to just answer some questions real quick. So I hope that kind of explains the thought process behind shots. Like, obviously, I can't go through every single shot and talk about how we would rebuild it from scratch and show that because we only have an hour here and a lot of these are really complex. But I do, I did want to share with you because I, I run into this a lot on the forums is somebody will um, show me some, I mean, just outrageously difficult paint shot and think the remove tool can do it. And the remove tool is really great for about 20% of the shots you're going to run into. And what it will do is it will simplify the process or it will clean up the shot 80% of where you need it to be to, you know, and then you just have to clean up that extra 20%. Um, but a lot of times people will think that it's magic and it, it can do crazy stuff that it can't do. What it can do is it can replace pixels based on the pixels that move behind it. Most shots that you end up with are going to be a combination of stabilization, um, especially if you're a Nuke or Flame user, you're gonna want to stabilize the corner pin, paint on top of that, and destabilize the corner pin. That's gonna be your workflow for most of your Nuke and Flame artists, okay? Um, for, you're also gonna use patches in the same way. So you could take a file that you painted, 
you know, a still that you painted in flame or a nuke, and you can also patch that in the same way you would patch in using a Photoshop file or anything else. Um, some of these shots are so complex that they need like a, ded a dedicated paint tool for. So some of these shots are going to be things like either you're going to be using Nuke's paint module along with a lot of tracking, or you're going to be using things like Silhouette um, because Silhouette has a really robust set of frequency separation tools that really help um, for things like reflections or glasses and all kinds of things like that, or in eyes or on lenses or in mirrors. It's going to be a series of patches, not just to remove the object, you know, based on the planar data that moves behind that object, but also patch in new reflections over the top that you've either built from scratch or copied from elsewhere in the scene, um, and then track back in based on what the reflection is doing. And you'd have to track the reflection to get that motion. So a lot of these are, are complex objects that you can't just slap a one-click solution on. And that's really the point I wanted to get across with this um, office hours today. So if you have any questions, again, please ask them in the chat. I hope this is helpful for you. Um, in the future, I'm going to look more towards uh, getting some node-based compositing in here. Um, in general, though, I'm working on this specific um, office hours this week because this is a tutorial I'm working on that sort of takes all of this thought process and distills it down into a more succinct, like five or six minute video so that we can really um, pack it full of quick information. But sometimes it helps to show you in depth as well. So I want to use this as a companion piece for that. Um, thank you so much for your time. If you think these are useful and if you enjoy being able to connect, uh, please like and subscribe. These are office hours from Boris FX. I am Mary Poplin. I do these every week at Tuesdays at 1 p.m. They last anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour based on what we're trying to cover. Um, I can look into doing a breakdown on a shot uh, specifically for how to paint st on a stabilized image, especially with occlusions. So if you guys want to see that in the future, please let me know um, in the comments. And what I will do is I will work towards that for another future office hours in the next couple of weeks. Um, and if we really need to show that nuke, we can do that too. So um, let me know. And thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day.